Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Greg Power. Greg is, of course, the Fisheries Division Chief with uh, Game and Fish. We're going to talk about the upcoming ice fishing season. First thing I want to talk about this morning, Greg, is the formation of ice. Now, we're running a little ways behind, I guess. We had such a beautiful October and November, but now we're fighting a big snowstorm. And some people might think that's good for formation of ice, but it's really not. No, it, it isn't. And, you, and you're right, we're, we're running way, way late, just like last year. We've had a couple years of late ice. Uh, this year it's a little bit different, is that we're really close to making ice, I would guess. You know, certainly by, certainly by the 10th of December, most lakes will have decent ice. But right now, it's with the snow and stuff and the wind, uh, when a lake freezes up that way with a lot of slush, it's not good for good quality ice for sure. And it's something we got to be very careful about. You know, the ideal ice making conditions are cold temperatures overnight where you might get down to even single digits, something like that, and no wind. Uh, you get that nice pure glass on the surface. Uh, doesn't look like that's going to be the case in many of our lakes this year. This could also pose a threat to winter kill. To also. winter kill, yes. We've also seen that for sure, that when you get that cloudy ice, you get that slush and stuff, and then you put a snowpack on top of that right away. Uh, photosynthesis right away has been reduced. The days are already short right now, so you don't have a lot of uh, uh, sun penetration. So we, you know, th the, the likelihood of winter kill this winter or come next spring is going to be significantly more than we've seen the last couple years, where we we've virtually have had no winter kill the last couple mm -hmm. years. Though. You mentioned that uh, this it may be forming questionable ice. Does that have any bearing on the, uh, there's a graph that we use, just kind of a benchmark uh, for accessing the ice. Is it going to have any bearing sure. on that? Well, it, it will again. I mean, that, you know, the graph, those, those things are used out there for, you know, kind of as a guideline for people. That's, that's based on good ice. And if it, it freezes up again as slush or something that na of that nature, uh, be, be very cautious. You know, they, they say four inches for walk on ice. Yep. And that's what people are interested in right now here short term. There, there may not be a lot of ice anglers, but they're pretty avid, those that want to get on in that early ice. Uh, for sure, I would say this year, have all four inches for the walk on ice just because, and then you put the snow on top of that relatively bad ice. You don't know, you know, where there might be a weak spot, whereas you have that clear ice, you can actually see the ice as you're walking, you can see the cracks and stuff. So, right. you know, it's something to be uh, very cautious about. Let's remind people uh, of the uh, parameters for accessing the ice. Right, again, the walk on ice as a general rule of four inches, something in that neighborhood, uh, d depending upon the quality of the ice. You know, you're talking, oh, people get into the ATVs and, you know, and they'll start scooting around on the, on, on the lakes there. You need all of six inches. Uh, ATV covers a lot of ground and it may be six inches where you start it may not be six <laughs> inches where you end so you know add, add a couple to all this and then you need uh, you need a good foot for pickups you know and that's and then North Dakota I, I keep going back to this but other than last winter every winter in our history we've had good ice during the holidays and that's critical to get people all ice fishing uh, looking at the long-term forecast, I think we're going to be there this year. It won't be like last year. Come Christmas time, the ice should be good enough for traveling. You know, the 12 plus inches on our lakes, uh, truck traffic, ice, ice houses, and stuff. But uh, if you're going to, we're, we're a ways away from the good 12 inches for truck traffic. That's providing that there's access to the ice. I mean, <laughs> well, you throw two feet of snow out in one right. storm with yep. strong winds. Um, well, that's a, and it's maybe an unfortunate event that could occur because we got very good ice fishing opportunities again this winter. We should have, almost statewide, we should have very good ice fishing. Uh, hopefully it's not one of those winters where you just don't have access because of the snow, you know. Uh, most years, 25% of our entire fishing effort course of the year is ice fishing. We know in bad years it's less than 5% and hopefully it's not one of those bad years. Regardless of the conditions, there are going to be some ice fishing opportunities this year, and they're going to be good ones. Let's go over some of the rules and regulations, Greg, that are different from summer fishing to winter fishing. Sure. It's basically the same other than you're fishing through ice. Um, 
The, the biggest difference, and, it's, and that rule's been in place for close to 25 years, you can use four, four lines ice fishing. So you have four holes out there. Uh, we've had that in place, like I said, about 25 years. We haven't, you know, on average, we're seeing people use about three lines, even though they could use a fourth. Uh, that's, that's the biggest one. We've got a couple changes this year that, that, you know, might impact anglers this winter. One is if you, whether you dark call spearfish or if you, any hole that you create, with an auger that's, let's say, that's greater than 10 inches, you need to mark that hole. The, the change this year is when you get to the lake, you must have that material with you in your possession mm -hmm. before, before you start fishing or dark hole spear fishing. You can't use sticks or, or rocks or, or well, tumbleweeds. You, can, you uh, can use tumbleweeds, but have them in your possession. What we found is that people, that's been the law for, for a while now, is, you know, for probably 10 years that you need to mark your hole when you're done fishing. But we find out that people get there, they have the intention to mark the hole, then they're done fishing, or d dark hole spear fishing, and they don't have anything with them. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, so now that's one change is when you get, especially dark hole spe spear fishing, come with the material you're gonna mark your hole with. Uh, the, another one that's uh, important is that we did reduce the possession limit on panfish, uh, white bass, bluegill, and, and, and yellow perch. Was 80, it's the possession limit is 40. So you have 20 daily, 40 in possession. That's important if you're you know, planning an extended period of, of fishing somewhere. And then uh, it's a ways off yet, but over the holidays, we are having our first ever uh, winter free fishing weekend, which, mm -hmm. is, which this year happens to be New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, the 31st of December, 1st of January, residents only. We of course have the open, uh, open water uh, free fishing right. weekend. Now we're adding the yep. ice fishing. We've had that in the first weekend of June. Now we're going to try one for, for ice fishing. And the idea is, again, the holidays, people are, you know, friends, family back home, get out there and try some fishing. We uh, should remind people of one rule also, because in certain instances uh, for perch fishing now, find a lot of, of small fish. There are a lot of opportunities out there and things. If people catch a fish that's too small, they need to release it right away. Yeah. Don't throw it in a bucket. Uh, gee, you know, if we catch four or five, we'll take them home. But if we don't, we'll put them back. Need to get them back right. in the water like right now. Yeah, and, and you know, and that part has always been a lot. That's no different than high grading out of live well, you know, summer fishing. You need to, you need to make that decision as soon as you catch a fish, whether you're going to keep it or release it. And if you release it, release it immediately. Don't especially ice fishing, got to be careful of taking pictures or whatever, deciding because especially the eyes are very vulnerable to the cold and they can freeze up pretty quick. So you want to make that decision. You're going to keep it. You cannot put it in the bucket of water. You can't transport fish away from a lake in the bucket of water other than the minnows that you, you have. You can't tra transport water right, from, from the lake, from exactly. lake to lake. We should talk yeah. about that a little yeah. bit, the uh, yeah. ANS. So it's, ANS, it's an ANS, Aquatic nu Nuisance Species. Uh, concern, uh, you know, it's also in the past some people there have been illegal introductions of people catching fish from one lake, keeping them in the water, and moving them to another lake. You know, that's taboo, that's a no no, and it's caused uh, anglers of North Dakota a lot of money, a lot of lost recreational opportunity over the years. Uh, so, that yeah, you can't do that. All right. Uh, one big problem that we do have uh, during the winter, particularly, is litter on the ice, people seem like they don't pay much attention. Right, well, I, I, I'll decide all of mine, I guess, or something, people, you know, that, that's, uh, that's nothing new again. That's a, I wish people would clean up after themselves better, but oftentimes it's, you know, the lake looks pretty good this time of the year or, or January, but come March and the ice is going off, or the snow's melted and oh my gosh, is there, there quite the mess out there. And litter is litter. I mean, it's against the law. Please, please clean up. And that includes, you can't discard your minnows on the ice and stuff when you're done fishing. You need to clean up, you know, take it away, take it home and discard it properly. A lot of people like to clean their fish on the ice. That includes, of course, fish guts. Don't leave those right. out on the ice. They're going to attract pests and things like that. But we should also mention, Greg, that there are some rules about cleaning your fish on the ice and transporting them. Right, and y you can clean your fish on the ice. That's okay, and and a lot of people practice it, and that's fine. Um, again, bring a bag, put your entrails in the fish, the carcass of the fish, take it home, discard it properly. Uh, 
you know, you should mention overnight stay too of the daily m daily limits. That if you're let's th for walleye, for example, five walleye daily, you can catch those w in your nice house, and you're going to stay overnight, and you catch five more. Lake Audubon's a popular lake, or Lake Darling, Devil's Lake. There's a lot of lakes people do this with ice houses. That if you cat you have five walleye in your possession, you caught them one day. You need to remove those from the lake, or else you're going to be technically in violation. What, of what do you mean remove them from well, You got to throw them in a cooler, or put them in your truck, put them on shore. Got to get them out of the ice house off the lake proper. So you're going to have to come up with a plan. You're going to have to come up you know, with a good plan of how to, how are you going to deal with that. Otherwise, game warden comes there, sees you have six, seven, eight walleye. You know, how Some how may be from the day before, but, but how do you prove how do you, how do you know, yeah. All right. As long as we're talking about fish houses, Greg, let's talk about some of the rules and regulations concerning uh, well, houses, what they need to be made of, things like that, licensing. Yeah, uh, licensing. Maybe that's the first one. We, we've done away with licensing oh, probably ten, oh, all of 10 years ago, but we still get some questions about, you know, where do I get a, a ice house license? There is no such thing in North Dakota. Other states, yes, but we don't have a license. However, if you're in, a, in any structure, ice house out, on a lake, and if you leave it unattended overnight, uh, you do need to have your name and your phone number or address on the on the house uh, in three three inches or larger uh, lettering on the place, so that we, if it was left, the, the reason being if that ace house, let's say it's a not a very good one, that sh some type of shanty is left there, uh, that way the game wardens can follow up so that in the end, come March and ice goes off, it doesn't sink to the bottom and it's part of that litter. All right, you mentioned it should be a good year, let's hope so. Huh? Yep, it should be an excellent year. All right, Greg, thanks. You bet. The round of fall advisory board meetings has changed a little from the original schedule due to our winter storm. Here is a revised list of the times, dates, and destinations for the advisory board meeting in all eight districts in North Dakota. Remember, these meetings are designed as a sounding board for individuals to speak up about outdoor issues. There is an agenda at each meeting, followed by a question and answer period. If you want to speak up, attend an advisory board meeting near you. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.